Today I'm going to show you how you can terminate potentially malicious PowerShell scripts with Event Sentry. Now, why would we want to terminate PowerShell scripts? A lot of system administrators use PowerShell, of course, for various tasks, and PowerShell is great and it's got a lot of functionality, but it's unfortunately also increasingly used by attackers. Not because PowerShell is bad or insecure, but because it's very powerful and because it's installed on most Windows systems and especially newer ones like uh, Windows 8 and Windows 10 and of course all the server operating systems where it's installed by default. So this is sort of an attacker's paradise where you essentially have an entire toolkit available at your disposal on the uh, target machine. The good thing is that most malicious or potentially malicious and questionable PowerShell activity can be identified because the attacker will pass certain command line arguments to the PowerShell process. And if we detect those arguments, then we can terminate that instance of PowerShell while at the same time leaving authorized and normal PowerShell scripts alone. Since Event Sentry is agent-based, it has a distinct advantage because it can detect events in real time and react on the target machine in near real time. So not only can you collect logs with Event Sentry and you know send them to a central location for compliance and security purposes or detect failed logons and issue alerts, but you can also take reactive steps to mitigate potential threats. So I'm going to show you this in action on this test machine here, which is a uh, 2012 or two machine. Now PowerShell uses an execution policy to determine which scripts are allowed to run on a system. And uh, by default, the execution policy is set to restricted, which means uh, no scripts are allowed to run. On this system, the execution policy is set to remote signed, which means uh, that all scripts and configuration files downloaded from the internet, and I'm quoting this from Microsoft's website, have to be signed. The problem with the execution policy is, is that you can bypass it with a sim simple command line argument. So it's really a sort of toothless protection here. Most attackers are always going to automatically pass the two uh, command, that one command line argument to the PowerShell process called exec bypass, which essentially means just run the script. I don't care what the execution policy is. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. So here I have a script test.ps1 that essentially just outputs um, a string. So when I run this, there's a small delay built in as well for about 800 milliseconds, and it says, hello, I ran. Now I'm going to run that same script with the command line argument that bypasses the execution policy, and that's simply exec bypass. And we'll see that while the PowerShell process obviously was started and the script was passed to it, it wasn't actually able to complete the script because the event center agent terminated it. Let's look at another example. So here I have a script that was actually downloaded from the internet. And I'm going to try and run the script show CPU H dot PS1. So that's just a script that uses WMI to uh, query some CPU information. Now, anytime I involve WMI, it's going to take some time, um, at least a second or so. So let's try to run this regularly. So we can assume that this is a malicious PowerShell script um, that was downloaded, shouldn't be run, but here I am running this script. And the first message I'm getting here is uh, the script is not digitally signed. Okay, well, because I know that this doesn't really matter very much. I'm just going to do the exec bypass and execute the script. And now we can see that the script is running here. I'm getting the header, but it doesn't really do anything. What this script should do is uh, generate an HTML page and open that HTML page in uh, the default browser. So you can see that by passing uh, specific strings to the PowerShell process, Event Center can evaluate those strings, match them against a rule set, which I will uh, show you in a few moments, and then essentially uh, terminate that process before it can fully execute. So we can see the PowerShell script did start, but as soon as it exceeded a certain amount of time, Event Sentry 
terminated it. And that's a disclaimer here. So if you have a PowerShell script that is extremely fast and the measurement really depends on the system it's running on, but uh, as a rule of thumb, I would say anything that takes less than a second will likely run and will likely execute before Event Sentry has a chance to terminate it. Because keep in mind, Event Sentry has to essentially get the notification about this event happening. So, you know, the, so the process starts, it's being audited, it's being sent to Event Sentry, Event Sentry evaluated against its filter rules. Event Sentry then goes to Windows and says, okay, let's terminate this process. And all that takes a little bit of time, uh, usually around seven, 800 milliseconds. Um, so if the process is faster than that, uh, Event Sentry will not be able to terminate it. But in most cases, any sort of malicious process is likely going to take longer than that because they usually download malicious payload from the internet or they'll do other things on the system that will uh, take some time. So just keep that in mind. And another factor, of course, is the uh, initialization of PowerShell itself. So the first time you're going to run a PowerShell script, um, after not having run any scripts for a while, um, the engine itself needs time to initialize. Um, so even that can often take two or three seconds the first time you run a script on a system. So I think it's generally safe to say that the majority of scripts uh, will take more than a second and henceforth will be able to be terminated by event entry. So what do those rules look like? So let's take a look. And of course, thank you to Rob uh, van der Vude, who uh, is, makes a, a lot of uh, useful PowerShell, Perl, Kicks, and so forth scripts available on his website. So this is the Event Sentry Management Console. All of our rules are here under Packages. So if you click on Packages here, Event Log, we can see all of our packages here. I'm going to scroll down and we have the PowerShell Security Package. Expanding that shows us all the rules inside that package. And the rule that was just utilized to terminate the script is actually inside this suspicious command params rule. And if we look here, we can see that the string number nine, which is the command line parameter, here we're looking for exit bypass. And if that matches, it terminates the process. And that's really how simple it is. This, this package is included with Event Sentry. So as soon as you um, install Event Sentry, you have that at your disposal. All you have to do is activate it and link it to a termination action which is really as simple as one dialog here with the $STR5, which is the process identifier. And that's how easy it is to secure your network and essentially protect yourself against the majority of malicious PowerShell scripts out there. So if you don't have Event Sentry installed, head to eventsentry.com, download a trial, it's free for 30 days, and give it a shot. Thanks for watching.